So the problem is mainly here in this corner and down here. I'm going to show you a video of the thermal image uh, where you can see all the heat loss, but the heat loss is basically in the corner and down at the bottom. You get it in the corner because you've got a lot of surface area outside. Once the corner becomes damp, it loses heat because a wet brick is a poor insulator and so it self-perpetuates and uh, obviously becomes a lot worse. The bed was up against the wall so air wasn't able to flow around. It still isn't able to flow around particularly well. You have got dehumidifiers there but they're just too small to make any difference. You want to have something that's 20 litres plus, especially if you're drying clothes internally. Um, you will see that this area is cold and then as we go downstairs, uh, I'll just, oh, just going to show up here that the wall is wet here. Uh, and you'll see the thermal image. It's, all, it's in the corner, but obviously the, the dampness will tend to drop down to the base of the wall. And that will show up in the damp meter readings that I'll show you in a second. These are the damp meters I recommend buying. You have to look at this. It says drywall and you just need to drop that down. This is now going to be measuring using uh, radio technology da density in walls. And you'll see that it's, got, it's off the scale here. What I want you to do, and um, here's where you're getting disruption. This yeah. is calcium sulfate salts that are causing disruption to the surface right, they, yeah. they're an ingredient in cement right, um, okay. it's actually drier down which is unusual uh, I wouldn't be surprised at some stage this may have been damp proof um, this is the area where we bought it they said was damp and they fixed they it they damp proofed it yeah well yeah. so what happens is you get a build up of condensation in the interface between the damp proofers um, damp proofing if you if you look at previous surveys the, yeah the um, two back, two and three back from this one, you'll find there's some really bad examples of yeah. damp proofers condensation. Um, and this, this is an example. So it's really disrupted here and then it gets drier down there. Mm. Um, and the darkness goes on. So it's hiding the problem, not dealing with the problem. Yeah. And the, the solution is just, well, in this case, it's just, Fix the ventilation, ventilation, which I've just done for you. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously there are other things I want you to do, but that's the, the yeah. primary thing. It's acting like a thermal fin. This is a lot of heat loss um, around the external surfaces here and all the way around here. And then you've got, it's exacerbated by this metal, wrought iron metal pipe, uh, possibly a bit of moisture coming in behind there. Uh, and also, these bricks here are going to get become a little bit damp mm -hmm. um, and I, it's not penetrating through. You're not getting the brown uh, telltale signs of penetrating damp, but you're going to get heat loss caused from the, met, the wet bricks because it's uneven. So some of them are covered and some aren't covered and it's that unevenness that causes the, the um, dampness. And, you, and this is going to be I think water dripping off this coating onto this area here rather than a, a gas of failure. Yeah. Looking through a thermal lens inside where orange is about five degrees war warmer than blue or purple, we see a lot of heat loss in the corner, which is why you're getting the condensation there. The temperature of the wall is below the dew point at the time of the survey. You can see it along the coving either side of the coving it's the heat loss at the top of the wall because you've got thin eaves and very poor insulation deep into the corner this is in the master bedroom where you've got metal uh, holding the the roof um, above the bay and then we're going to look in the the rear bedroom and here in the rear bedroom, we're seeing a lot of cold. Uh, and part of the problem is the extra heat loss from the external surface area, but also the lack of airflow of warm air behind the bed. And even though you've got a small dehumidifiers that make very little difference, see the mold on the back of the picture. 
mold grows where relative humidity goes over 85% for long periods of time and it's the the humidity from the bathroom which I've now solved well you'll see in the following images but also the heat loss so the bathroom extractor fan is hardly moving at all uh, I'm going to, oh, I think I can see the problem. Oh, well. The backflow shutter seems to be, uh, we'll have a look. So with this fan, um, it has backflow shutters. They, they are free now, or at least I've improved them. Um, uh, there's a, a, a jumper here that I might try switching and this is probably, it's either a timer or a humidistat. So if it's humidistat, it's worth turning it down. If it's timer, it's worth turning it up. And we'll see what the whether that improves it. So to turn the fan on, you need to turn this one on, which does this light, which doesn't necessarily always work, but the fan should still work. You can hear it now, now that it's working. Uh, I've um, improved the flow rate dramatically and um, hopefully the timer, but we'll, we'll know that once it's... Uh... So that is now showing 15 liters a second, give or take, which is what you need. So this is in fact the overrun here. So I've extended that the full uh, strength. So you can you need to twist that clockwise to get thirty minutes.